everyone. Hello and welcome back to the uh, Citizens' Inquiry into the uh, Iraq War. Um, well, we've had um, quite a long session this morning with uh, a lot of evidence being outlined and also uh, uh, Ben Griffin, an uh, ex-SAS uh, member, coming to give evidence here. Um, and this afternoon, the two hour session that we've got, we've got a, a couple of new panellists who come in, so I'll let them introduce themselves to my right. Um, I'm Holly, <clears throat> I'm a Richard citizen, um, and I'm here today because um, I'm concerned that the Chilcot Inquiry didn't look deeply enough into the legality of the Iraq War and whether um, Tony Blair's decisions taken since the Iraq War was, should be prosecuted in a more legal manner. And to my left. Um, my name is Ines Kumar, I'm a guardian of the earth and I'm concerned at the moment with the present management of affairs on our planet at this time. Right, so um, now I think we're going to uh, Chris Coverdale, an expert in the laws of war, we'll be introducing the next se section on accounting for genocide. Um, and then James will be defending the government position on that. So, uh, Chris. Thanks very much. Um, just to put it into context, uh, everybody has got a blue document accounting for genocide, so I will be working on <coughs> What we did this morning was just to look at whether the war with Iraq was legal or illegal. And this afternoon we really want to focus on whether a crime of genocide has taken place. So we'll focus mainly on that. I'll have to take you through just one or two things about uh, genocide from the, uh, the blue document. So, if you uh, turn to page 8, it's headed the domestic law against genocide. And I'm going to read out the English and Welsh and Northern Ireland law pertaining to genocide. It is an offence against the law of England and Wales for a person to commit genocide, a crime against humanity, or a war crime, or to engage in conduct ancillary to such an act. This applies to acts committed in England or Wales, or outside the UK, by a UK national resident or person subject to UK service jurisdiction. So that's the criminal offence uh, written into law. In fact, it is slightly more complicated than that when you take a look at the actual act. It's about uh, 30 sections, but that's a summary of it. Now, the important thing is to understand what we mean by genocide. So I'll move on to the definition of genocide that's contained in the legislation. And this is the same definition contained in the international legislation and the domestic le legislation. For the purpose of this statute, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnic, racial or religious group as such. A. Killing members of the group. B. Causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. C. Deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about physical destruction in whole or in part. There are some other uh, definitions in the uh, legislation, but I haven't included them there. It gets into too much complication. Now, the important thing is that is the domestic law, and I just want to refer to the international law. Uh, so at the bottom of the same page, you'll see the international law against genocide. And that's contained in the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, and that applies to 118 nations at the moment. Uh, most of them in Europe and elsewhere, but not America. And the section I want to draw attention to is 3C. Talking about the crimes of genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes, it is for the purpose of facilitating the commission of such a crime, aids, abets, or otherwise assists in its commission or its attempted commission, including providing the means for its commission. And the important phrase is that last phrase, including providing the means for its commission. In law, the means are the material.
materials, the money, the supplies, the armed forces, and all those other components that make up warfare. And the one I want to draw attention to is the money. So in effect, this means that it is a crime to provide tax to a government which uses it to commit an act of genocide. And later on, we'll see that that is a crime of conduct and consider it a genocide in under the law and under the way. Well, the reason I'm raising that is that um, it's very difficult to find anybody in this country who has not paid tax between now and uh, October the 7th, 2001. All the tax you have been paying in that period is, in fact, totaled up and it's your contribution to the genocide of the Afghan Iraqi and the Iraqi. We'll talk about that later on, but it is an important thing for everyone to realise that technically, by paying tax, you are committing an offence. Is this inquiry um, looking to prosecute all of the UK who pay their taxes, or is it focused on Tony Blair as a perpetrator of genocide? Because although what you said is right, they did fund the weapons. Are we looking to then say that everybody is culpable, or are there levels of culpability that we're looking at? Uh, well, this inquiry is just looking at the facts at the moment, and we're not going to go into the actual prosecution uh, and possible conviction of Blair and others at this stage. Today's event is really focused entirely on has a crime of genocide been committed? And I hope in the next hour to show you that in law and technically a crime of genocide has taken place. If that is the case, then I also will show you how crimes of conduct ancillary to genocide have taken place and how that has been linked to every taxpayer. So we're not to be looking for the perpetrators, but more just proving that the act has taken place sure. and then the next stages would be to... So I'm hoping that at the end of these um, uh, proceedings, we can then send the results of our findings and the videotapes and everything else to three sources, as I said this morning. One is the War Crimes and Crimes Against Humanity Unit at Scotland Yard. The second one is the prosecutor at the ICC in The Hague. And the third one is the US Embassy to pass on to US prosecutors. We want to provide the evidence which will initiate criminal proceedings against our leaders. So it's crucial then that uh, once we know what is genocide, we then need to go into a little bit more definition of it. So I'll ask you to turn to page 10. Um, there is a lot of argument as to the whole issue of in genocide, and the important issue is that the Rome, the Rome um, statute defines in detail what is a crime of genocide. And that was brought into English law with a statutory instrument signed by uh, Jack Straw in 2004 when he introduced the genocide, um, sorry, the statutory instrument which defined the elements of the crime. Now in that, the legislation specifies four elements of the crime that must be in place before a court can convict a person for the crime of genocide by killing. Remembering genocide by killing is the first of the issues in the definition of genocide. And they are, one, the perpetrator killed one or more persons. Many people think that genocide has to be lots of people, but the legislation says one or more persons. The second one is such person or persons belong to a particular national, ethnic, racial or religious group. Thirdly, the perpetrator intended to destroy, in whole or in part, that national, ethnic, racial or religious group as such. And lastly, the conduct took place in the context of a manifest pattern of similar conduct directed against that group, or was conduct that could itself effect such destruction. So if we are to convict our leaders of genocide, we need to get a really firm grip on all of those four elements and make sure that they're all in place. And if by the end of this afternoon we agree that they are all in place, then that is, uh, sets up 
the uh, criminal proceedings against Blair and others. Now, the, the one that, is, that causes some problems is number three, but firstly, very briefly, all we need to do is to say that the perpetrator killed, and it, you'll notice next to it, it said, there's a little four. What this means is that the word kill is interchangeable with the word cause death. So although uh, our leaders may not have directly killed an Iraqi citizen, they have done such actions that have caused the death of Iraqi citizens. And we will need to prove the link between their actions and orders and the deaths of Iraqis. So that's the meaning of that little uh, subtext there. Uh, basically, looking at it, we know that at least 100,000 the Iraq body count has said that 100,000 at least people, they've got names, dates of death and everything else. So we've gone well past the one or more persons criteria. Let's move on to the second one. <clears throat> Such person or persons belong to a particular national, ethnic, racial or religious group. They do. Uh, people living in Iraq call themselves Iraqis. That is the national group. And we can quite clearly state that Iraqis have been killed because they were living in Iraq for no other reason. If they've been living in uh, Berlin or uh, Oslo or something, they wouldn't have been affected. But because we have fire cruise missiles and other things into Iraq, killing Iraqis because of their nationality, that's where they were, and that meets the second of the elements of the crime. 